summer of 1967 is universally remembered as the summer of love. The Beatles had just released Sgt. Pepper's in May, the West Coast had a fantastic music scene, and San Francisco was considered to be the hippie capital of the world. The underground scene in Britain was also blooming with bands like Pink Floyd and many others. And several British singles released that summer, eventually became all-time classics. However, many other interesting singles failed to chart and remain relatively obscure to this day. Let's take a look at some cool psychedelic singles released in Britain in June 1967. Emily tries, but misunderstands. See Emily Play was Pink Floyd's second single, released a couple of months after their debut single Arnold Lane. This is one of the most iconic songs from the psychedelic era in Britain. Derek Johnson from the New Musical Express, reviewed it the week it came out. I felt that on the Pink Floyd's last single, the psychedelia in which they specialize didn't really come through, but they've made up for it on this new one. It's crammed with weird oscillations, reverberations, electronic vibrations, and fuzzy rumblings. Surprisingly, somewhere amid the happening, there's also a pleasant mid-tempo tune that's appealingly harmonized. This should register. There's an old vacant apartment above the shop on the square. Shadows and Reflections by The Action should have been a massive hit in the summer of 67. The song seemed to have it all. The melody was great, the sound was hip and up-to-date, and it was produced by Beatles producer George Martin. The single got very positive reviews in the press. Nick Jones from The Melody Maker wrote, Despite a few disappointing comebacks, The Action never failed to make good records. Again, this one is good and it gets better all the time. The sound soars back and forth, as the harmonies fight for prominence in the shadows and reflections pattern. The harpsichord and horn breaks give the record a hard punchy sound which drives beautifully over the groovy rhythmic backing. There's a lot there, a good dance beat, and a very catchy song. This could be their first big one. The Action were a very popular band in the club scene, but that popularity didn't seem to translate into chart success. Despite the positive reviews, the single failed to chart. In an interview several years later, George Martin said, The Action were an amazingly talented outfit who sounded brilliant. I loved the records I made with them, and I'm baffled they did not achieve superstardom. All right, all you groovy tuned in, turned on way out fans, here's a sample of your kind of music, as we feature Eric Clapton, Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce, otherwise the cream in Strange Brew. Strange Brew, once Strange Brew by Cream is still remembered as one of their most memorable singles. And it's definitely one of the most iconic singles from that era. New Musical Express wrote, Yep, I can see the Cream doing very nicely with this. It's moody, mean and raw, with a nagging insistent beat that gnaws at the brain and almost hypnotizes you. The lyric is absorbent, and it's sung in high-pitched tones carried on a wave of reverberating twangs. The week the single came out, Lulu reviewed the new singles for Disc Magazine. Lulu wrote, That opening sounds just like Jimi Hendrix. Very much like Jimi Hendrix, in fact. Naughty. A hit because the cream are so popular, but it's not as good as their other hits though. Harry Clapton really has gone all Hendrix, hasn't he? He's great in his own right, but all I can hear is Jimi Hendrix. Everything's overshadowed by this. The song peaked at number 17 and spent a total of nine weeks on the chart. Another cool single released that month was Come On Down To My Boat by The Gods. The Gods featured Future Stones member Mick Taylor on guitar. However, Taylor left the band soon after this single to replace Peter Green in John Mayall's Blues Breakers. Greg Lake then briefly joined the band but left in 1968 to join King Crimson. And drummer Lee Kerslake found bigger fame a few years later when he became a member of Uriah Heep. The song failed to chart, but Mick Taylor's fuzzy guitar and that swirling Hammond organ are worth the price of admission. Every morning finds a morning, cause of all the trouble that Chris Farlow, who reached number one the previous year with a cover of Out of Time by the Rolling Stones, also experimented with psychedelia in 1967. In this case, he chose to record a cover of Moaning, the jazz classic by Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. This is probably the most unusual cover ever recorded of this jazz standard, with fuzz guitar and prominent sitar. The New Musical Express wrote, 
from the opening swelling cymbal crash to the final Kentonish brass blast, there's not an uninteresting inch of groove. In between, Chris Farlow moans his way soulfully through the number, accompanied by practically every musical sound that producer Mike Hurst could add to the mix, but it all adds up to an exciting hit sound. The single flopped in Britain, but it was a decent hit in Germany. Another single released in June 1967 which featured musicians who would find fame a few years later, was this one by The Sin, with future Yes members Chris Squire on bass and Peter Banks on guitar. Created by Clive was a decent novelty song, but the real highlight was the B-side, Grounded. The Sin were very much a part of the psychedelic scene in Britain. And a month later, they wrote the song 14th Hour Technicolor Dream, dedicated to the well-known happening that took place in London in April 1967. Like many other bands from that era, the Small Faces ventured into psychedelia in 1967. Despite the fact that the song was obviously about a drug dealer, the lyrics somehow bypassed the senses, and the single reached number 12 on the charts. The New Musical Express wrote, This is the Small Faces' official new release, unlike the LP track issued last week by their former record label. And it's a goodie, rather more subdued than most of the discs, it has an attractive melody line and fascinating harmonies, which are both blues-flecked and falsetto. Rattling tambourine and controlled guitar work lend color to the backing, and the entire performance gels smoothly and appealingly. And dig that crazy ending. With all the promoting they intend putting in on this one, it should see them in the top 10. Ironically enough, both The Sin and The Attack released the song created by Clive as a single in June 67. And in both cases, the B-side was much better than the main side. Color of My Mind is yet another example of a mod band musically evolving and venturing into psychedelia in 67. Despite John Peel constantly playing their music on his confirmed garden radio show from Radio London, the band never managed to really took off commercially. And they remain one of the most underrated bands from that era. Studio experimentation and way out effects were all the rage in 1967. And this song is a good example of that. Many psychedelic songs from that era used phasing effects in order to achieve a trippy vibe, but this song took it one step further. Record Mirror wrote, British simulated West Coast sound. And in some rather eerie way, it comes off. Atmospheric certainly, the song has a grow on you appeal. A way out adventurous single. Life. Back in the 60s, there was so much competition in Britain, that many bands decided to move abroad in order to make it. The Sorrows had a minor hit in 1965 with an excellent song called Take a Heart. But they soon relocated to Italy, hoping to find bigger success there. And they did find some moderate success in Italian territory. Most of their singles were released in both Italian and English. And this single from June 1967 was no exception. The band even appeared in an Italian film performing the song. New Musical Express wrote, From the title, you might expect a touch of psychedelia, and you'd be right. There's an insistent thump beat nagging away all the time, with oscillating guitar noises. And the lyric is very surrealistic. The song failed to chart in Britain but charted in Italy. And last but not least, Episode 6 was yet another band that featured a couple of members which would become big stars a few years later. In this case, the band featured future Deep Purple members Ian Gillan and Roger Glover. Morning Dew was an excellent single with a very atmospheric and almost spooky vibe. Record Mirror wrote, First time hearing I didn't like but the vibrancy of the sound and performance clicked solidly next time. Now, I feel it stands distinct chart chances. So the moral is listen twice.
I hope you enjoyed this trip back to June 1967. See you next time.